and welcome to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah, this is Nova, and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. Hello. <laughs> that was a very short intro that I recorded with Nova because she promptly dove headfirst off the couch and I very narrowly avoided her smashing her face on the coffee table. So... <laughs> She's in bed. Hopefully we'll stay that way for an hour and we can get through this podcast because we have so much to talk about. I know I say that every time, but like we legitimately do. I have something exciting to share. We have prize winners for the Love Your Stash Cow. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six projects to talk about. That's crazy. I started two new projects because I just can't stop right now. Um, also a bunch of happy mail and yeah <laughs> exciting stuff so we might as well dive in but if you're looking for me anywhere on the interweb you can find me as the cozy cottage crochet at instagram and facebook and anything you have to say about the podcast specifically please shoot me an email to the cozy cottage crochet at gmail.com that is the absolute best way to get a hold of me and i can respond to everything there <sighs> get your favorite drink i have some tea and i will talk about this tea more later but it is this Irish cream tea by Tea Can. Tea Can? Tea Can? Probably Tea Can? I don't know. Um, it is one of my favorite teas of all time. It's just so good. I don't know why I like it so much. It's like mildly, mildly flavored, but like so delicious. It's amazing. And I need a little help today. <laughs> um, I need a little caffeine. I haven't had any all week, not a drop. Um, but I am one PMSing, two have not gotten enough sleep two nights in a row, three um, since Thursday night last week, Nova has had a terrible cold. She's finally feeling better, but she gave that to my husband and I, and we got whammoed <laughs> with it. So, you know, it's just been one of those weeks and I'm going to have a little caffeine and uh, chat with you all and it's going to make everything so much better. So the first exciting thing before I go any further is... I have a pattern release that I know many of you have been waiting for and it is the Omega Blanket. Yes, it's finally done. I was finally able to take photos. Um, some very, very lovely people tested uh, the preemie size for me. Um, if the preemie size stitch counts work, then it works for the whole blanket. So this blanket is graded preemie all the way through king size blanket. There are, I want to say, eight sizes of this blanket that you can make. Uh, you can clearly see where the dye lot changed <laughs> because I had this yarn from Stash and this yarn I ordered later. But unless it's under not under studio lights, you can't tell. So the Omega blanket is actually named after a Star Wars character named Omega, who is a clone in the Bad Batch Clone Wars series. It's an animated series on Disney Plus, and she's just like the most delightful character. She's kind and thoughtful and funny and smart and resilient and a really good friend. And I just named this after her because of the stitch pattern makes all these little O's, which I love. So this is the Omega blanket. Nova loves to stick her fingers in the holes. I have managed to keep this blanket kind of away from her <laughs> because she likes to drag it around and I wanted to keep it pristine until I could take photos. But now that I have, she is going to take it over, I'm sure. And look at that. I missed trimming off two ends. <laughs> All the rest of them are done. This blanket has been washed and blocked and this is made using Valley Yarns Haydenville Worsted. I made the baby blanket size, which is like a 36 by 36 inch square. But as I said, it's graded from preemie um, to like baby, toddler, lap blanket, throw blanket. <laughs> um, twin, full, king, queen, all of that. It's graded in all of those sizes. Um, you can, I'm really excited. I'm gonna put it up here because I think it's perfect. Oh no, I covered Minnie Mouse's face. Nova put Minnie Mouse there earlier today and I figured she should stay for the duration of the podcast. Maybe I'll scoot her over a little bit so the blanket can have its full glory. So um, this pattern is now available on Ravelry. And um, if you use the code OMEGA, I will put it on the screen right now. You use the code OMEGA until next Saturday, uh, which will be what date? No idea, but I will put it on the screen. 
then that will give you one dollar off the price and that's just a way for me to say thank you to everyone for supporting my pattern launch i know it's been a really long time since i've a released a pattern um i have so many in the works and nothing is happening but this one i managed to like get it together um this is what three weeks of having a babysitter for a couple hours a week has done it made me take photos of one pattern <laughs> and get it tested and tech edited so maybe slowly i can get back in the groove i don't know the next pattern that i'm working on is the belong wrap because i really would like to have that released during pride month which is june but honestly who knows but i'm gonna try my best um and then as soon i found i tried to sit down and write the pattern up for the belong wrap and literally it was like mind bending to me and it is not a, hard, a difficult pattern my brain is so out of practice with these things so once that one is done, then I will move on to the math for the, the DK version of the granny stripe cardigan. Um, I, I got to get back in the headspace because I, I just can't. I don't know. It was like really hard to figure out what I was trying to say and put it into clear terms. I don't know. So yeah, that's a work in progress. But this is the Omega blanket and she's finally out in the world to be made by you. And I would... If you're making a baby blanket out of the Omega or any size blanket, but especially a baby blanket, like please take photos, please tag me, um, make a project page on Ravelry if that's accessible to you. Um, there's really nothing that helps a designer more than like making project pages and like sharing it. So thank you so much y'all for being here and for supporting me for months and months while I worked on this. I appreciate your patience and also your excitement. Love you guys. Next, I have some prize winners to announce. Um, I'm going to announce the winners first and then I'll show you the prizes because they're going to be in no particular order. I have drawn, this is for the Love Your Stash Cal that ended at the end of April. I mean, the end of March. <laughs> Where am I today? I've drawn two prize winners from Instagram and two prize winners from Ravelry, both completely random. Um, and there will be a fifth prize because I drew someone who technically probably isn't eligible for prizes, but I wanted to send her something when I saw her name pop up. So the Instagram prizes, and I have sent a message to you already on Instagram. I've sent you a message and on Ravelry. If you are a winner, I've sent you a message. So please respond with your full name and mailing address, and I will get this in the mail to you hopefully as soon as possible. So the first Instagram prize is for Evelyn Oxner. She made a beautiful purple crocheted top. It was like gorgeous. So congratulations, Evelyn. Um, the next Instagram prize is for Anaya's Toy Box. I hope it's Anaya. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and she made the, she made a whole bunch of stuff, but like this incredible Amigurumi doll, like next level. I'll put her Instagram name on the screen. You should go check out her page. Um, and I believe your name is Alyssa. So congratulations, and nice toy box. And then the two posts that came up from Ravelry are post number 16, which is Andrea164. She made a fabulous looking muscle burra hat. And then post number 91 is Andy Williams, who made a very incredible crochet shawl. So congratulations, Andrea, and congratulations, Andy Williams. Um, and then the last thing that came up when I was randomly drawing the Ravelry prizes, um, the second prize that popped up was actually the moderator in my group named Nicola, Nicola Nitz. Um, and she made this humongous blanket and used up like all of her medium sized worsted weight yarn for this blanket. And it's huge and very impressive. Um, and I want to send you something too. So I believe, I think you're in Canada, possibly. I don't have the prize. For you Nicola pulled yet out of my prize box um, but I will what you will get in the mail will be a surprise so that's five prizes and as I said send me respond to my message and let me know and um, I will get that in the mail as soon as I can so these are the four prizes that I have pulled and basically I can't tell you which one you're gonna get because it's gonna depend on weight and where people are located. So the parcel that weighs the least will be going the furthest distance away just because of shipping costs right now. Um, so this is prize number one. It's living in a giant bag. And it is a sweaters quantity. So six of these skeins of Knit Picks Brava Sport. This is 100% acrylic yarn. I have made a sweater out of this yarn. I made it in this gray color. Um, there's some tea in there. There is a chapstick from New Love. And I made it in this color. So I had ordered 
This is the one skein that's left over of what I had ordered and I made this sweater quite a while ago and I had also ordered a sweater's quantity in this color, this burgundy, but I haven't ever made a sweater out of it um, and I think it should be used. So I am contributing to someone else's stash <laughs> and um, I really love the sweater that I made in this gray. I just haven't gotten around to making a sweater in the maroon and I think that someone should. So there's six skeins of this maroon color, which is, the color is wine. And then there's one skein, if you want an accent color of this asphalt heather color from Knit Picks. So that is what's in this giant bag is seven skeins, 700 grams. So a sweater quantity of sport weight yarn, um, as well as some tea and a chapstick and what else did I put in here? Some stickers. <laughs> so that's prize number one. I feel like there's something in there that smells really good. Something smells good. <laughs> I'm gonna put that over there. Prize number two is this things. So there is a Katia Ombre cotton kit for a knit shawl. This is the shawl. It's gorgeous. It's a faded, you can tell it's a fade. Obviously you don't have to make the shawl, um, but if you want to, there's a pattern already included in this. I think this is really pretty. And again, I have had it and I like, I want to make it, but the way my life is right now, I just don't know that I'm gonna have time anytime soon. So I want somebody to make this shawl or make something equally beautiful in these skeins, these little skeins of fingering weight cotton that are so soft. Um, and with it is going to come three balls of Rapstar, yeah, Lion Brand Rapstar yarns, which is 70% acrylic, 30% wool, and it's 100 grams, 437 yards. So this is a fingering weight yarn. There's three of them. Depending on what you are making, I think you could get a summer tee or a top out of this, um, or a really, really giant shawl. I love I love them. Um, I very rarely make anything in brown for myself. And so, again, I want this to be used. I want to contribute to someone else's stash. Um, I hope you can make something magical and beautiful in this yarn because I've it's fingering weight. You know I love fingering weight. It's my favorite weight of yarn. Um, and just the fade in there is gorgeous. So I think this is going to make such a beautiful project. There's some tea, there's a chapstick, and there's a button that says, I give up crochet, but I'm hooked. <laughs> So that's prize number two. Prize number three is over here. And this is, again, <laughs> I'm trying to um, give out prizes that like you can make a substantial project with or a lot of things with because it was a love your stash cow to like bust out these whips, right? And bust out part of our stash. So I want to fill some holes. So this is a, a whole pack of, again, fingering weight yarn. This is actually 62% cotton, 23% viscose, and 15% nylon. And they are 50 gram balls, so there's 400 grams. This is ice yarns. I, this marled color I think is absolutely gorgeous. It's a little bit of a thick and thin type yarn. Um, so it may be better for, I think it would work in knitting or crochet. It is plied, so it's not, um, it's not just gonna come unraveled. Um, but I think it's really, really pretty. And you could definitely make a summer garment out of this. And then also I'm going to throw in, this is a skein of Knit Picks. It's kind of a muted rainbow color. And I bought this a really long time ago. It's actually one of the first fingering weight skeins of yarn I ever purchased. And it's just been sitting in my stash oh, for, for years now, um, waiting to be loved. And I haven't loved it enough to make something out of it. I don't know why, because I love rainbows and I love all the colors but I wanna send that to you. I want somebody else to love it. And there's some tea in here as well. There's a little um, hand lotion. And then this says, this is a button that says candy cane wishes and yarny squishes. That is a Claudia of Crochet Luna button, of course. I will link her shop below because she has the best buttons of all time. So that's prize number three. And then prize number four is a little bag full of sock yarn. So this is, four balls of Knit Picks Felici and one ball of Red Heart Heart and Soul. So you could, depending on what kind of socks you're making, get five pairs of socks out of this. Um, there is of course a lovely button from Claudia in there that says crochet, knitting, love for all. Cause you can make anything out of this. It doesn't have to be socks. It doesn't have to be knit socks. There's Red Heart Heart and Soul again in this muted rainbow color. 
This is the color Spring Stripe. I haven't used this particular colorway, but I did make an entire pair of socks out of Red Heart, Heart and Soul and really enjoyed it. Um, it was a similar kind of rainbow color. I really liked making those socks. And this is a self-striping. And all of these are self-striping, in fact. <clears throat> There's some tea and a chapstick in there as well. And the button I already showed you. And then let me show you the nitpicks. So these are very springtime colors. There is, this one um, was started in the rewound. I apologize, but the yarn doesn't expire. <laughs> it's still good. There's two of these, Nitpicks Felici Time Traveler. That is the colorway. This is a, a more vintage colorway, meaning the Nitpicks colorways for Felici are not repeatable. Um, once they sell out, they're gone and they don't bring them back. They just make new colorways. So um, I really, this, I think would make a very excellent pair of socks, both of these. Then there is a Knit Picks Felici, what colorway is this? Chelsea. This is like the definition of Easter colors, isn't it? And as is this one, which is soft serve. So yeah, one, two, three, four balls of Knit Picks Felici yarn and one ball of Red Heart, Heart and Soul and some odds and ends to make you happy all in a little snowman bag. <laughs> That's prize number four. And of course I will go pull something <laughs> to send to you, Nicola, and it will just be a surprise that you will have to see when it arrives on your doorstep. So those are the prizes. Thank you so much to everyone who participated in the Love Your Stash Call. I wish I had prizes to send every single one of you. You all deserve it. Um, your projects are truly amazing and so inspiring to me. Like I have been just scrolling through and looking at them. Um, I know I have not been as active in responding as I would like to be, but life is out of control <laughs> as per usual right now with a 16 month old and me and everything going on. So I have looked at them though. I promise I've seen all of your projects and they're just gorgeous. You've blown me away. So thank you for participating and um, we'll have another make along soon. I don't know what, I'm gonna have to have a think about that but something we can do together again soon. Okay, that is all of the administrative stuff. The Omega Blanket. I'm just gonna keep doing this at points in the podcast. The Omega Blanket, because I'm so proud that a pattern is finally out in the world <laughs> for this blanket and all the prizes. And um, I guess that means it's already 9.16. <laughs> I don't have, the time is shrinking, ah! <laughs> I guess that means we need to get on to what I have been making. I have felt very all over the place the last two weeks. Part of that is um, I didn't get any yarn time at all. When the Friday, Saturday, Sunday that the last podcast episode went up, so two weeks ago, I didn't touch yarn at all. It's just a very busy, very crazy weekend. So I didn't get my normal time and then um, that next week was okay, but I had I was kind of all over the place and I just felt mentally all over the place. And I just kept picking up things and working on it for a couple stitches and putting it down. So my Skyrim cardigan didn't really get a lot of work done because I cannot just pick that up and put it down. It requires deep concentration. Um, and then Nova got sick this week <laughs> and over the weekend, like from Thursday night through Monday, she was really sick. And then of course I got super sick on Monday. And so I've just been like, my brain has not been here. So the Skyrim cardigan has gotten some work, but it is not done, unfortunately. But that meant that I, for some reason, started two new projects. <laughs> Why, I don't know, but I do have a finished object. A finished object, you say? Yes. And I love it. It's a love-hate relationship and it is going to live with someone else. So I was working on it last time and I was really excited about it last time. And I'm still kind of excited about it in the sense that it's a great pattern and I like the finished object. I just don't like it for me. And I'm talking about the Cleo Fedora, which is a free pattern by Make and Do Crew. I made it out of Lion Brand Rewind Tape Yarn, which is this in the colorway Capri Breeze. It is 100% Oh no, it's 70% polyester, 30% viscose. So this is the yarn and you can see it's a very flat tape yarn. I very much enjoyed working with this yarn. The only thing I will say is that it does come apart easily. If you, if you really tug on it, it's gonna come apart kind of like a single ply. So be careful. 
Um, but I used about one and a half skeins of this yarn and I finished it and I hated it. <laughs> I finished it Thursday last week and my mom loves it. So she's going to have it. Um, I've, at the time, none of the ends were woven in and I didn't do the top part, but this is the hat. Now you can see it's got quite a stiff brim. That is because I crocheted over some 16th, 1 16th inch galvanized steel wire. And that was kind of uncomfortable. That was really uncomfortable on my hand to crochet over the wire um, and then do the border. But it does give the hat quite a lot of structure. And I think it works really well for the hat. Um, so I've kind of shaped this to look like a fedora, but you could have it as a sun hat as well. So I finished it. I put this little tag on it that was sent to me by my lovely friend, Emmy. So it looks super profesh. It says the cozy cottage crochet. And then I took some random yarn and braided it to make like a hat. What is this? Like a, a brim hat band? Is that what it's called? <laughs> so I put that on there as well. Um, and it's a great hat. I'm just never in a million years going to wear. Not ever. I put this hat on and I was like, oh, definitely not. Like I, I don't know why I hate, like, I guess it looks kind of cute, but I, this is not my style. I don't know why I thought it would be my style. The most I would wear it would be like this, but I feel like a sunflower. <laughs> like I am, I have realized after making this hat that I'm definitely more of a floppy hat person, not super floppy. Like this brim would probably be too big. It needs to have a little bit of structure, but like a raffia straw sun hat type person, not a straight brim. It might not look so weird to me if I had longer hair and like something here, but like, I don't know. I just feel like my face looks like the moon and then there's like this giant halo around it. I just don't understand. Okay. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand why I don't like it. But when I look at myself in the mirror wearing this or in this video wearing it, I just can't stand it <laughs> on my head. And even if you think it's cute on me, I don't think it's cute on myself. And I promise you, I would never wear this. Never in a million years would this be part of my wardrobe. But it was a fun make. And um, it looks great on my mom. She has hair here. Um, I had her try it on last week. So, yeah. She's going to take this home with her tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even on all the way on my head. Let's push it down. Yeah, I just, I cannot. Have you ever made something like this and you're like, oh no, that is not my style at all. I feel like the last time I did that was uh, with a sweater when I made something and I was like, I'm never gonna wear this ever. <laughs> but yeah, it was a really fun make. Just, I just not, it's not, I'm not gonna wear it. So yeah, that's a bit of a fail in terms of crochet time, but in terms of a really cute finished object, not a fail, actually great. I probably could do with a little bit of reshaping of the brim since it got smooshed over there by Nova. But yeah, I mean, it's a great hat. And if you wear fedoras or like wide brimmed hats that are kind of have a flat brim, go for it. Cause it's a great pattern. It's very easy to read. It's very intuitive. I loved working with the rewind tape yarn. Just for me personally, never gonna wear it. So this one, I have to take a photo of it and then it's going home with my mom <laughs> who will love and appreciate that. So that's my finished object slash tale of woe. Have you ever made something that you're just like, wow, this is not for me. Comment below. I would love to hear your story of the thing that you made that you were like, definitely not when it was finished. But also that you were like excited about while you were making it. Not the one where, you know, you had doubts the whole time. <laughs> I don't know. So, okay, I, <laughs> we might as well do, let's do the two pairs of socks that I'm working on and then we will talk about two crochet projects and then the Skyrim cardigan. So the first pair of socks you have seen many times, it is the, my current travel sock. So it just goes anywhere with me in my bag. And if I have a few minutes, I put a couple stitches on. So it had a couple stitches put on about an inch. I was right there last time and it got all the way up to there. Maybe it could be even an inch and a half. Um, these are my Zauberball Crazy Socks. I want to say I have maybe another inch of the foot on this first sock. And then I will be doing the toe decreases. This is a kind of a long standing sock whip. So it'll be good to make some progress on this. Um, 
Not much to say about that other than you've seen it a hundred times and you'll probably see it a hundred more before it's finished. The second pair of socks I actually started and I'm almost all the way through the first one. Is that crazy? I showed you this yarn last time because it was a gift from my lovely friend Maria who used to own the Fat Bunny Yarn Company and she closed that yarn company so you can no longer buy Fat Bunny Yarn. Um, but she gifted me a sock set and um, it's the colorway Chill Factor and Lucky Sock Fingering, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 465 yards. So this is the colorway. It's just the most magical. I don't know, this colorway just speaks to me so, so much. Every time I see something even similar to this, I'm like, mm. yes. So this, and then also this beautiful blue mini that goes with it. So I wound it up. In fact, I wound one day last week. I wound these two and then I wound 10 skeins of yarn <laughs> to make the Darjeeling cardigan. I have not started it. I haven't swatched for it because the Skyrim cardigan is not done, but I did have some time where I was listening to something for work and I didn't need to be using my hands. So I wound yarn while I was listening to it and that was really lovely. Um, <clears throat> so I wound all five, I wound five uh, skeins of the maroon yak yarn that I showed last time and all five skeins of the mohair. So that when I do, when I am ready, I'll be able to start. But I also wound this. And then I immediately, it must have been, it wasn't Thursday last week. Maybe it was Wednesday last week. And then Thursday night I had started this because Thursday night last week, Nova had to go to bed really early. She had a, she just ended up having a fever. Um, and I didn't realize that she was getting sick, but she went to bed at like 6.15. So I had a little time. And I got through from here all the way through the heel. Now you may think, oh my gosh, the cuff is blue and the heel is this <laughs> same yarn. Yes, because I meant to have blue contrast cuff, heel, and toe. And I got on autopilot and full on forgot to change yarn for the heel. <laughs> what? I cannot believe I did that. So now these socks are just going to have contrast cuffs and toes. They're not going to have a contrast heel because I have to match them because I'm a little bit OCD about that. So yeah, and I've just been working on this on and off all week and I'm literally like an inch maybe from starting the toe decreases, maybe an inch and a half. I'm working on this all week. So the way that I knit my socks is I do, I cast on 64 stitches. At the moment, I'm obsessed with making them top down. So uh, a toe up socks also great. I've made many a pair of toe up socks but at the moment, <laughs> I'm making them top down. I cast on 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle. That just works for my foot and my gauge. I do 15 rounds of two by two ribbing, 15 rounds of stockinette before starting the heel. I currently am obsessed with the shadow wrap heel by Denise, who is Earth Tones Girl. It's from her sock exploration pattern. And then I do five and a half inches of stockinette for the foot. And then Mina's rounded toe from Mina's two at a time sock recipe two at a time vanilla sock recipe, I think. Um, and Mina is the knitting expat. So that is my perfect vanilla sock recipe at the moment for my postpartum feet. Because <laughs> my feet changed after I gave birth to Nova. And now I need a little more room in the instep, which is weird, even though my feet are the same size. And also I have been wearing the heck out of my wool socks, not during the day because it's 90 degrees. But ever since giving birth to her, for some reason, my feet have been cold at night and that has never happened before in my life. I have never ever wanted to sleep with socks on. I have hated sleeping with socks on, in fact, like with a passion. And if I had socks on, I would be way too hot. I would wake up with like sweating. Since she came out of my body, she like rearranged some stuff in there and now I have cold feet every night. Has this ever happened to anyone else? So now I wear a pair of shorty socks, wool socks to bed every night and they're perfect, which means my wool socks are getting way more use than they used to and washed way more, etc. So <clears throat> plus I did like a de-stash of them to make more room in my drawer. Um, and some of them are like falling apart. They've been worn to death. So I want to make some new ones. And this, there's just nothing in the world like knitting socks with hand-dyed like plump squishy yarn. They're, it's just the best thing in the world. It's the best thing to knit. It's the best thing to wear. I have truly only wanted to work on this this week. The yarn is so plump. The color is so pretty. And I texted Maria a picture of it and I was like, look at your beautiful yarn. It's so pretty. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you, Maria, for this lovely pair 
of socks, or I should say the yarn to make this pair of socks that I will think about you every time I'm wearing them. And they're beautiful. They're beautiful. And I think, honestly, I would have enough to make two pairs of these. Probably not with... I won't have enough of the mini left to make contrast cuffs, heels, and toes on another pair, but I could get two pairs of socks out of 100 grams of this yarn. So yeah, that's just been a delight to work on, and it's Thursday today, so I'll probably be working on that tonight as well. It's a good mindless project. <coughs> um, let me show you the other new project I started. So I got some Happy Mail, and one of the things... It was a happy mail of yarn from a lovely lady named Angela, which I will show you all of that in a minute. But one of the things that were in the box was Bernat blanket yarn cakes. I am assuming it's two or three of them make one ball of Bernat blanket yarn. Um, but there were 10 of them total, 10 of these little cakes. And actually I was about to order some or go to the store um, I was thinking about, like, do I have time to make a baby blanket for someone? I know someone who's pregnant. Actually, I know two people who are pregnant, and I don't know if the second one's going to get a blanket. Mm. But I wanted to make a baby blanket for my doc my doctor, the pelvic floor physical therapist, which might seem super weird. Um, but she has just added s such goodness to my life. Um, and we have very similar stories. I think we have very similar personalities. She had two miscarriages before she was pregnant. She's currently pregnant. Um, about halfway along, maybe 25 weeks with her first child and it's a boy. And um, as I said, we're just, we have very similar stories um, because we both had miscarriages and we've kind of related over that. Um, not that we're friends necessarily because it's still like a doctor patient kind of relationship, but I just feel for her so much and I'm so happy for her and I want to make her a baby blanket. So I am with this yarn. So I came out of the box and immediately I started making a baby blanket with it with my trusty nine millimeter crochet hook. And this is how far I am. Yeah, I'm gonna go with three of those cakes is one ball of Bernat blanket yarn, most likely. Because generally what I do is buy three balls of Bernat blanket yarn to make a baby blanket <clears throat> and one contrast color. Um, so I'm gonna have a bunch of extra ends to weave in <laughs> because these are split up. But I've prob I'm probably through one ball, I would say, because I think I've used three. Right, let me count the ends. One, two, three, yeah. I've used three of those cakes so far. So basically what, I, what I'm gonna do is make the whole thing gray, then I'm gonna do one round of a gray border, or maybe two rounds, and then an accent color of this. This is the colorway dark teal. I assume this is just gray, I don't know. It didn't come with a ball band. But yeah, um, and that way it'll, it's kind of neutral, but still like boy related-ish. And this I have just been picking up and putting down as well because it's very easy, very mindless, and again, all over the place. There's no official pattern for this. It's just a corner to corner blanket. If you Google that, you will find many, many tutorials on how to do that. I personally, this is my favorite way to gift a baby blanket because it is thick and squishy. So this isn't gonna be really used as a blanket on an infant. But then again, you don't really use blankets on infants because they're gonna suffocate, right? Um, so it's not gonna be used as a blanket, but it is very squishy and soft as a tummy time mat or play mat on the floor. Um, and so I love to make them, especially C2C because there's these holes. So you know that there's some airflow getting through, but also it's really soft. So if the baby is up on its tummy and like, drops its head, it's not gonna smash its head on the floor, which Nova did a few times. So that's why I like making these. And then as they grow, then it be can become more of a blanket. So that is the other new project that I started. Maybe I'll work on that tonight. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll work on nothing and stare at the wall. That's also a possibility. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I still have two more projects to talk about. I feel like I'm talking a billion miles an hour. <clears throat> Maybe it's because I am. I need to slow down. The other project is living in this lovely bag that came from Kalisha of the Quirky Monday Craft Cast. It has the most magical African lady on it. I just, every time I look at this, I'm like blown away. I don't, this bag, I'm just obsessed with it. Um, you saw this project last time and I was complaining about it because I had frogged a fair portion of it. <laughs> because my stitch count was way off. 
it was skewing to the left. So I have finished, this is where I was last time. I had pulled out almost a half a ball of yarn. So I finished the first ball of yarn and I've moved on to color number two. And then this is color number three. Woo! Right here. So it's gonna be moving through neutrals, really, which is so pretty. This is 100% alpaca yarn and they don't have colorway names, just dye lots. And I don't even have the name of it. Oh, Juniper Moon Farms. Juniper Moon Farms is the name of it. And this, again, is very simple. I've just been reaching towards really simple things lately. And it has all of this texture, this love, lovely texture. And it has an alpaca stitch marker because obviously. So yeah, this will be a pattern at some point. If you can tell it like skews ever so slightly, but that will block out. I have been obsessively counting <laughs> and it is correct. It is correct, the stitch count. So yeah, that's also alpaca man, just hair everywhere. Alpaca sheds like nothing else, truly. I don't have a name for it. I don't have any plans really. It's just something to make with this beautiful yarn. It just felt like it needed to be that. So I'm excited about that. And now let's talk about the Skyrim cardigan. <laughs> I was really hoping to have it finished because, you know, I only had like half a sleeve and then like three quarters of a sleeve left. If that was the only thing I was working on, it would be finished. Um, or perhaps if I had the mental space for that to be the only thing I was working on, but I have to count two things when I'm working on this. I have to count decreases and I have to count the fade um, and keep track of it all and then do helical knitting on the fade parts. So it's, was, it has just been too much for my brain. But I will show you the progress. The Skyrim cardigan is the long line cardigan pattern by Hohi Locatelli. Oh, this is my Mission Impossible <laughs> Mao project that is apparently still going on, on and on and on. And I have to take, there's a ball of yarn in each sleeve and there's a stitch counter in each sleeve and I don't want to get them tangled. Put that over there, put this over there, I'll take this off. This is my Treasure Island shawl. It's the first pattern I ever released, still the most popular of all time. So I'm gonna put this on for you. You can see how much progress I've done. Ooh. I have to put it on this way because there's strings attached. Oh, okay. So we have this and look at these sleeves. They are 12 rows apart. And they're truly like almost done. I think I have one, two, three, four, five more sets of decreases on the left sleeve, which should put me like here and then i'm going to go straight into the ribbing normally you would keep knitting <laughs> but i because my arms are shorter i guess than the average person's arm <laughs> and because my arm hole was deeper than the pattern called for um, i'm reaching the end of my arm quicker than i would in the pattern but i'm determined to make this fit me and my body and not the pattern measurements, because that is why we make things, right? So you can see I'm matching the fade. So I am on color six, I believe, and I'm about to do 25 rows in color six, which will get me through another three sets of decreases. I may not even get through all the decreases, right? Like honestly, the sleeve is a little, it's honestly a little big, but I don't think it looks bad. And I like having a little room. Not that I'm gonna be wearing anything long sleeved underneath of it, but yeah, I'm really happy. I'm really, really happy with it. It just looks so professional. <laughs> I mean, I have a billion ends to weave in and I am already concerned about them like coming out. So I think I'm going to put a little fray check on all of the ends on the inside to make sure that it stays. This cardigan is going to be babied, of course. It's only ever gonna be hand washed, but I'm just delighted. <laughs> very, very, 
delighted. Let's see if I can get this off without, <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. How did I do it last podcast episode? Okay. One, two, and then look what I did to my shirt. <laughs> Crazy town. So yes, here it is. Maybe, just maybe, the next time I record, <laughs> this will be finished. But who knows? So I'm going to put this ball of yarn back in this sleeve with this stitch counter. And this ball of yarn back in this sleeve with this stitch counter. And then I've been kind of rolling it up like so, so that everything stays contained inside this package. Because truly, it would be the worst thing on the planet to lose my place at this point. And when the Skyrim cardigan is done, not only will there be a celebration that you will be able to hear from miles around, <laughs> I truthfully like there's so many projects I want to work on and I just am not letting myself until the Skyrim cardigan is done because I, I know my limits right now. Maybe I don't know my limits, but I'm at least aware that this is a limit. I cannot have more than one of that caliber of project on the needle or hook. So when that one is done, my plan is to then keep and finish swatching for the last ray crochet sweater pattern of which the yarn is already wound up. I'm desperate to make that and swatch for the Darjeeling cardigan, which I am very excited. So yeah, I'm excited. Um, let's move on to Happy Mail. <laughs> so first things first, I got to visit with a member of my patron and longtime viewer of this podcast and friend named Allie, who came all the way from the UK from the UK. Um, they were supposed to come two years ago for their honeymoon, but then COVID, everything got canceled, postponed multiple times. So they finally got to come and they were going to Disney and doing all the things, but they came all the way to St. Pete to say hi to me. I got to meet her and her lovely daughter. It was so lovely to spend the day. Um, it also happened to be the day where um, it monsoon rained in St. Petersburg, like a thunder, lightning, pouring down rain. <laughs> so we didn't get to do much. And Nova had, she smashed her face on the coffee table that morning, which she has never done before. And I, I saw it happen, but like she literally sat down to, with her face too close to the edge of the coffee table and like jammed the coffee table up her nose. Um, and she was just like screaming. There wasn't any blood, which I was shocked about, but she had a mark, like she must have hit it right here. Thankfully, she didn't hit it right here because that could have broken her nose. So she had this, she had a red nose all day. She had a mark. I gave her Tylenol um, twice that day because she just, see, and I was like, I mean, she probably has a massive headache from smashing her face. So it worked out that because I had given her Tylenol for smashing her face, I didn't realize that she was probably getting sick. Um because the Tylenol kind of kept the symptoms at bay, but she was very cranky. Nova was like, Bleh! the whole time. Um, and actually right before her bed time, um, we put her in the bath and she just, it was like 6 p.m. we put her in the bath. She started crying, like just sobbing and she was shivering. And I was like, oh, okay. So we washed her really, really fast, got her out of the bath. I took her temperature and she had a fever. Um, and I was like, well, you know, she was just in the bath, <laughs> but I gave her some Tylenol anyways, um, to, cause I was like, maybe her nose is still bothering her. We'll have to monitor it. So I gave her some Tylenol. Um, and then about 20 minutes later, I took her temperature again and her temperature had gone up, which that if it was, you know, cause she was in a warm bath, it would have gone down. Right. So I, I felt so bad. I mean, it, there's, I couldn't have known, but like basically because she injured herself, and I gave her medicine that masked what was also going on was that she was getting sick and she got really sick. Like, um, 
not to the point where we had to call the pediatrician. Although if it had continued one more day, I would have because she had a fever for like five days in a row, um, four days in a row and the fifth day she didn't. And the, on the fifth day, I was gonna be like, okay, that's too many days in a row to have a fever. But at one point it was like 102, but it never really got higher than that and Tylenol always brought it down. So she was just miserable beside herself. Um, so I hope that none, none of her germs rubbed off on you. <laughs> Allie, I had no idea she was getting sick. And we still got to hang out though. And they came over, we went to our local yarn store and that was fun. I didn't buy anything. So I was too busy chasing Nova, Nova around who just found this little basket of yarn and like moved things from place to place. <laughs> and then I put it all back before we left. And then we went downtown St. Pete to this place that makes fresh pasta to go, but like homemade fresh pasta. And oh, I love that place. We were gonna eat there, but it was about to rain. It started sprinkling. So we're like, okay, let's get in the car. So we get in the car and then the heavens open. I'm so thankful we got in the car when we did because trying to put Nova in the car in a thunderstorm like that would have been a nightmare. We were also going to get an apple fritter from a local place called St. Pete Donut, Donut House. Is that what it's called? I can never remember the name of it. St. Pete Donut maybe, St. Pete Bagel. Um, and they closed nine minutes before we got there. So we did not get an apple fritter. But we got to eat this delicious pasta and we got to spend time together and it was really lovely. Like I had such a lovely time and um, Allie made this for Nova, which is a bumblebee. And she can't say bumblebee, but she goes, buh, buh, buh. <laughs> and then she's been carrying this around. And this morning she brought it up to me and she said, mama. And I said, what? And she said, more. And I said, oh, do you want me to sing the bumblebee song? <laughs> and then she said, please, this is please. And please, it, um, the song is like, I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee, <laughs> that one. So yeah, we've been singing the bumblebee song a lot. This is the cutest. It's so cute. So she really loves it, Allie. <laughs> she loves it so much. Um, but she brought me two whole boxes of this Irish cream tea that I talked about at the beginning of the episode. It's one of my favorite teas of all time. They don't really sell it anywhere in America. You can maybe get it online. You have to buy like hundreds of bags. At least I, it was the last time I looked. Um, so I don't know if the supply chain issues have been worked out, but it's tea cane Irish cream. And this is a very magical tea. And like, this isn't an expensive tea if you're in the UK or Europe, right? Like it's like a regular tea box price, but here, it's hugely expensive to get online. It's just so good. It says Irish cream, a selected black tea, specifically with the flavor of Irish cream. It says black tea with a fine taste of cream and the flavor of best Irish whiskey. I don't taste any whiskey at all in this. And I have a pretty strong whiskey sensor because I don't like it. I don't taste any whiskey whatsoever. It's very delicious. Highly recommend if you can get your hands on it. And I have two whole boxes now brought to me all the way from the UK, which is so, so nice. I'm so excited about that. And she also brought me a lovely skein of yarn with the colorway Ray, which is Nova's middle name. And this is a 50% Merino, 50% silk. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um, 400 meters. It's so shiny and gorgeous. I don't know what I'm going to make with this, but this may go in the very special skein box. Yeah. And she brought me a, a couple of lovely stitch markers as well. So thank you so much, Ellie. It was such a pleasure to get to meet you. And all of y'all, if you are ever in St. Pete, because I'm not able to really travel anywhere currently. <laughs> If you're ever in St. Pete, like, please message me, send me an email. Like I, if it's possible, like I'd love to meet up with you. Um, it may be as simple of a meetup as like you hanging out at my house while it monsoon rains and we eat pasta. But like, that is so amazing to me. I would love to spend time with you. Um, it like was the highlight of my week and definitely the best way to start four days of Nova being sick. So Then a lovely little package came in the mail from my delightful friend, Lisa, who is another long, long time viewer of this podcast and friend, and she's moving. Lisa, I'm so excited for you. I'm not gonna like share her personal details about where or anything, but like basically 
they've been waiting for this house to be finished and it's finally finished and I'm just so excited that you get to be in the finished, finished, finished house. Um, and so she was cleaning out her craft stash and sent me a few things to give them a good home. Um, there's some hook and like needle cases. So this is a like interchangeable needle kit case. It has all the little numbers. Um, yeah, I think it's for, I suppose it could be for crochet hooks, but really I think it's for knitting needles. Um, and then this one is a, this I actually really need. I didn't even know I needed it until I opened it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this would be such a better way to organize. I have some random fixed circulars. I have one interchangeable set and then, but it doesn't always work in every size. So this is like a circular needle case holder. This will be put to use immediately um, because I, this is so much better than like the random bag that I have these things shoved in. Um, this one I probably don't need because I have my Chowgu case that came with my needles. So I'm going to give this, I'm gonna put this in the prize package to someone who can actually make use of this um, because it's just like lovely. It's lovely fabric and um, I think someone would really be able to make use of this. And that's what I want. I want to share the love. She sent me some very delightful, these look like they're all single ply except for that one. These must be shawl leftovers because they're all jewel tones together. These are so pretty. Some little odds and ends. Two pom-poms. <laughs> Cat pom-poms. And then a cool, I really like this little tin. Um, it's got a gauge counter. Some knitting and crochet. Those might be crochet stitch markers too, but um, little stitch markers. And then like cable, cable needle holders. I like this tin very much. I am a fan of a good box. We've had this conversation on this podcast before. I love things to put things in. <laughs> it makes me happy. So that was like so sweet. Thank you, Lisa. And I just am so happy for you and your move. And then the last thing um, <clears throat> is quite a lot of yarn. Um, some of which you already saw because I'm turning it into a baby blanket immediately. It is not even making it into stash. I have to go through all of this, um, see what I can use personally, um, what um, I know someone else who's making baby blankets and shawls and things for charity right now. So I'm going to pass some of this along to them if they would like it, because I want to support that as well. Um, and what may go in the prize box for you guys for later. Um, this is from a lovely lady named Angela who sent me um, a bunch of yarn. So the first one is Hook and Needle Kit Club. Um, most of these are acrylic. You'll know there's nothing wrong with acrylic in my book whatsoever. I love acrylic yarn. I have made sweaters. I have made shawls, I've made hats, I've made all kinds of things out of acrylic. In fact, one of my most used hats is made from Lion Brain Jeans yarn, which is 100% acrylic, and it wears like iron. This is Annie's Hook and Needle Kit Club. So I don't know what colorway that is, but that is, I think, such a beautiful baby yarn. All of these are like individually packaged, <laughs> and um, Nova had the best time in the world pulling these out of the box and throwing it. Like this ball got, of yarn got thrown across the room multiple times. I was so glad it was packaged. I assume this is like Red Heart or something like that. Doesn't have a label. This is from Annie's Hook and Needle Kit Club as well. And I can't tell what it is. It's kind of like a art, artsy yarn. 46% acrylic, 35% polyester, 19% mohair, worsted weight with sequins. Oh, well, that's cool. Put that back. There is some Karen Simply Soft in pink. Oh no, Karen Natura. I've never heard of Karen Natura. I assume it's acrylic. Does it say? Yeah, acrylic. So maybe it's Karen before Simply Soft existed. This is um, again Annie's Hook and Needle Kit Club. This is like a baby booty kit. So cute. Same thing. This is a kit for a one crochet and two knit scarves. This I think would be so perfect. You know what I'm gonna do with this? 
there is a local place um, around me, maybe an hour away, that takes donations for like teaching teenage girls how to knit and crochet. And this is perfect for that. Can you imagine? I would have killed for this as a teenage girl, as this as these skinny ruffle scarves. Um, that is going to go to be, that will be donated to some teenagers who want to be fabulous for sure. Um, this yarn I really, really like. It's, um, I'm going to pull one out so you can see it. There's probably some red heart at the bottom, but then this is a fingering weight. It's called candy floss, but it's a two ply acrylic fingering weight. I've never seen I've never seen this yarn before. From Fintex. Never even heard of that company. Blue, Red Heart, I assume. Karen, something like that. Um, white and blue, similar. This also will have to go to the teenagers learning. Um, because this is some kind of pattern. There's some kind of pattern to make with art yarn for this as well. <laughs> so yeah. That would be very, very cute. Oh, sorry about all the noise. In fact, I think there's some more. Oh yes, here's another one. This is for, it's a wrap. Look at that. That's amazing. And again, perfect for teenage girls who need to learn how to knit and crochet. So that's definitely three. I'm gonna go through this really carefully and see because I could keep all this and hoard it, but like, oh my gosh, I have been so blessed by y'all. Um, and I love, part of my job, I think, is to spread the warmth. And if something's not giving the love and attention it deserves, then I want to send it out in the world so you can give it love and attention. Um, and yeah, this is all like very hard wearing, very, um, will stand up to being frogged multiple times yarn. So there's, like a blanket quantity of this green in fashion knit minty green yarn. There is one giant pound of love from Lion Brand. There's a couple more Karen Simply Softs and uh, what's this? Oh, these are cute. Little neon tiny balls. Yeah. So yeah, and this also, this is, I believe, a set of Hobie knitting needles, the bamboo kind of knitting needles. Those also I'm gonna donate to that local place that helps girls who are at risk learn how to knit and crochet. So just delightful, I'm so, I'm so delighted um, to squish all the yarn and be able to pass along some to like brighten other people's days and people that need it. Like it's just so beautiful and wonderful to be a part of this community. It makes me happy. It makes me really happy. I appreciate you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, uh, Allie and Allison. And thank you, Lisa. And also I got a couple of dishcloths in the mail from my friend Kim from Texas, but they're already in rotation. So I cannot show them to you. <laughs> One is hanging over the dish trainer right now. <laughs> So it's been a wild and crazy two weeks. Roller coaster. I've been all over the place. The baby's been all over the place. She's been sick. Josiah, she so kindly gifted her germs to Josiah and I. I felt horrendous on Monday. Um, truly have not felt that sick in a very long time, like a couple of years. But by Tuesday mid-afternoon, I felt much better. And now like I have a very slight runny nose, um, but pretty much I'm fine totally fine right now. So that was nice that it wasn't like <laughs> lasting forever. So yeah, it's April 14th right now, I think. Easter is this Sunday. I'm not prepared. I need to like get it together. And my birthday is going to be next Saturday, the 23rd. I'm going to be 33. Am I gonna be 33? I guess so. I guess I will be 33. That math adds up. <laughs> Pretty much since Nova's arrived, I have no idea how old I am, what day it is, or what time it is, or what's going on. I've got nothing. So yeah, I'm gonna be um, 
old now. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I know 33 is not old. <sighs> I certainly feel it though. Maybe it's the lack of sleep <laughs> and having a cold at the beginning of this week. So yeah, I don't know. I guess I need to get my life together now that I'm gonna be 33. Ooh. Hopefully, next time I will have bound off the Skyrim cardigan. Maybe? I'm not gonna beat myself up about it if I haven't. But I feel like I'm getting so close to the finish line and I'm getting excited and I just want time to work on it now. So we'll see. <laughs> um, leave me a comment below. Let me know what are you working on. Let me know about this ridiculous hat. Like if you have ever made something that you were so excited about while you were making it and then as soon as you finished it, you were like, definitely not. <laughs> Let me know, comment below. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That just helps me to know and YouTube to know that I'm putting out content worth watching. And you can subscribe as well. There's a new video that comes on every two weeks on Saturday mornings on this channel. And yeah, until I see you next time, be kind to yourself. And I'm sending you a big virtual internet hug from me to you. And from this sleepy baby to you. Have an excellent week. Thanks friends, bye.